Hi everyone, Andrew Ambrosius and welcome back to the Art of Business English. So today uh, we're going to be covering collocations and idioms. Um, if you don't know what collocations and idioms are, then don't worry. They will be explained shortly. So uh, we use, uh, well native people use collocations and idioms in their English every day, okay? So something, if you really want to take your English, your business English to the next level, you're going to have to start to appreciate collocations, actively look for collocations and try and incorporate them into your business English. So what are we going to cover today? Well, I'm going to basically describe to you or outline what collocations are, okay, and then I will also be defining what idioms are or idiomatic expressions are. Uh, and by the end of this podcast, what you should be able to do is understand idioms, okay, understand collocations, have some techniques on how to look for them and incorporate them into your English, okay, and I'm going to give you some tips on the best way to do that. So basically, by the end of this session, you should be able to you know, start to actively look for collocations and identify them and you should also be able to appreciate idioms and the role the role that they play in in our in business English. Okay? Now I'll start with, with collocations, okay? So collocations are words that go together. Okay? So um they're words that naturally go together in English. All languages have forms or some form of collocations, okay? As well as idioms. I mean, all languages have idiomatic expressions. And we'll look at some of those later. But with collocations, they're words that really go together well, okay? And they sound normal or they sound very natural to native speakers. There are generally two types of collocations. There's strong collocations and less strong collocations. What does that mean? Well, typically uh, a strong collocation means that there is one word that will go with another word, okay, to make um, this collocation. For example, now that was probably not the clearest definition, but for example, if you look at photo, okay, there is only one word which goes with photo which is take a photo okay you can't really you can't do a photo or make a photo um, but you you can only take a photo okay so that's a very strong collocation okay um, whereas a, a less strong collocation there would be mm, uh, more than one option okay more than one option available for um, which would give the same meaning, okay? Because, for example, if I said to you, like, hold a party and have a party, I mean, those two go together, okay? Hold is celebrar, hold a party and have a party, tener una fiesta. So, even though the verb changes from celebrar or tener from hold to have, um, the meaning is more or less the same. You could say to someone, this weekend I'm having a party, or this weekend, I'm holding a party, okay? So you can see that that collocation is less strong because there's two options and they basically both mean the same thing, okay? So these are these are collocations generally, okay? This is what, what that means. And like there are many, many different ways that we can make collocations. For example, you've got adjectives and adverbs, noun plus noun, um, noun plus verb. So there's lots of different ways that we can put words together to form collocations. Now, in or on the AOB website, I've got a post on um, collocations and idioms, okay, that accompanies this podcast. So if you want to read in more detail about what structures or what combinations can go together, then I encourage you to take a look at that post, okay? And then at the end, you'll see that there's like a short quiz or a short course that you can take on collocations. So 
though that's basically the definition of a collocation okay and they're very important because I mean you have been taught during your English learning career about grammatical rules and and things that you know it's like this because this so there is some explanation behind many grammatical rules the problem with collocations is that you really just have to learn them by heart okay it's not necessarily there's not necessarily a rule okay and even though you can say well this is an adjective plus adverb collocation or this is a noun plus noun collocation or a noun plus verb collocation I mean you should get to the point in your English where you don't have to think is this uh, adjective or adverb collocation? No. You, you should get to the point where it sounds natural to you. You don't even need to think about it. And for example, I mean, I'll give you a classic example. Make and do. Make and do are very problematic for Spanish speakers because uh, in, in make and do is the same verb in Spanish. It's like hacer. So, you know, you, you say in English, I'm going to make a cake, but I'm going to do my homework. So a lot of people, especially those coming from a Spanish speaking background, they can often get the collocation confused. Okay, they can say, oh, I'm going to make my homework today. And you can't make your homework because make does not collocate with homework. What is good about collocations is that if you say to a native person, I'm going to make my homework, they will understand you. Okay, so that's one of the positive things about collocations. It will sound wrong to a native person. I mean, they will be like, ooh, make homework? Ooh, that doesn't sound good. But it won't impact negatively, negatively on, on your communication with that person and the understanding. So there is some room for error, okay? You do have a bit of leeway, we say leeway. However, um, if you want to sound native, if you want to take your, your, your English to the next level, you really have to work on these collocations and you really have to make sure that you don't repeat these common mistakes, okay? And it's not that difficult, it's just a matter of memorizing and learning them and through repetition, okay, and exposure and contact, you will uh, start to well, you start to just take them on board and start to incorporate them into your language and you won't uh, make the same mistakes again, okay? So make your bed, and do your homework, make a cake, okay? Do some exercise. All of these things are collocations, okay? Um, now, how can, we, how can we improve our collocations? Well, there are many ways and I would like to discuss those together with idioms because basically the techniques for learning and improving collocations is the same for learning and improving your uh, idioms. So if you guys don't have any more questions or if, you, if you're clear on collocations, I'm going to move on to idioms, okay? So idioms are similar to collocations, that's why they, we can teach them together. Uh, but idioms are generally groups of words that go together, okay, to form expressions. So they are a little bit different from collocations. For example, if, if I say do homework, okay, it's very clear the meaning on what I'm saying, okay. The meaning behind do your homework is clear, okay. The problem with idiomatic expressions or idioms is that they're groups of words that go together and even if we know the words individually we still don't know the meaning of the expression because uh, they're, they're like colloquialisms for example um, in the in the podcast sorry in the post I use an example in Spanish an idiom is tomar el pelo okay now or el tiene mala leche all of these are idiom, idioms and if you know what that means so if you know toma el pelo is to pull someone's leg I mean in English I understand what pull someone's leg is so as long as I know the translation between uh, toma el pelo and pull someone's leg then I'm fine I can understand exactly 
the context or the meaning of Tomal Pelo. But if you translate Tomal Pelo and you've never heard the expression before, you'll be like, okay, take the hair. So you can see that even if you know the words individually, their definition or translation, you, when you put them together, they don't make any sense. Or when you translate them, they don't make any sense. So, I mean, pull someone's leg. If you translate pull someone's leg, it is tirar la pierna de alguien. So, I mean, that doesn't make sense at all. It sounds ridiculous. I mean, how can people know that pull someone's leg means to have a joke on them, make them um, tell them a funny story or tell them, tell them a story that's not true so that, so that they believe something that's not true? Um, the same as the very colloquial expression is to take the piss, um, tomar el pipi. I mean, if you take the piss, it's the same as tomar el pelo. Uh, but these expressions just they don't they don't have a translation. So idiomatic expressions you need to be very careful with them, and you really mm, will get confused because uh, if you don't know the meaning and native people would use them all the time they're very common in business they're very common uh, in everyday English so the the ways that we can learn these expressions okay are related to uh, well the, the, the way we can do this is by um, well there's several ways okay I'll, I'll go over them and they're the same really for um, they're the same for idioms and collocations, okay? So the first thing and the most important thing is to read. The more you read, the more contact you have with the English language. And it's an easy way. I mean, if you don't have the opportunity to talk to native people, or if you're not surrounded by native people, or you're not coming into contact with native people, then reading is a great way for you to have this exposure to real English. and if you read, you will come across many colloquial expressions, okay? And furthermore, you'll expand your general vocabulary, okay? And it's a good way to absorb and take in structure without actually realizing, okay? Uh, so reading is a top, top thing to do, okay? It's one of the most important things you can do. But when I say read, I mean, you have to actively read. This is the, this is the difference. Uh, when with if you want to be a good learner of a language you need to be consistent and you need to actively participate in your own learning what do I mean by that well if you read something and you see an expression then write it down extract it from that document make the effort to have a list of collocations or idioms or new vocabulary and you know, once you pull it out, then review it and try and incorporate it into your language. It's not. It doesn't matter if you don't always incorporate the, the, the vocabulary or the expressions that you learn. But the most important thing is that when you have learned something or you've heard it, you know the meaning. So that when you go to a meeting, the, 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 the next time you hear that expression or that word, uh, or that collocation, you will be like, oh, okay, yeah, I know what that means. And that way you won't... Um, you won't get lost, okay? And, and, and you'll, you'll remember it. And remember, a lot of these collocations and idioms, you will understand them from the context that they're used in. I mean, people use them in different contexts. So that's important too. So the second thing that you can do is try and copy native people, okay? Um, obviously, you need to have contact with native people to do that. But if you have got colleagues who are native, uh, every time you hear them use one of these expressions, ask them what it means, and then you can copy what it is that they that they've, that they've said. Okay, and then you can use it again if you see it in emails. I mean, a lot of the email communication has um, has idiomatic expressions in it, or or it has um, collocations. So, again, actively participate in your own learning. If you um, if you see an expression, then put it extract it from that email okay so that's a simple way to do it what else you can um, you can get a good collocation dictionary yeah of course I mean you can find collocations uh, easily in a collocation dictionary um, and there's lots of PDFs on the internet as well if you want to grab a PDF um, lots of websites will have a PDF on collocations for you 
uh, or idioms for you. And finally, you know, like you're doing now, you can just research. You can do some active research and say, you know what, I really want to take my English to the next level. So I am going to do some active research on collocations. So when I when I talk about research, what is the best way to go about research? Well, it's quite simple really. Collocations and idioms generally focus on category, uh, like they're, they're focused on areas, categories, okay? So that means that if you are going into a negotiation or a meeting, then you can look up the collocations and the um, so the collocations or the idioms that are related to negotiation skills. Okay, so you could say we need to reach an agreement. Okay, we need to close the deal. Okay, uh, we need to find common ground. Uh, these are expressions that you would hear typically in a negotiation. I mean, and the good thing about that is that you you then find it easier to pinpoint the collocations that you're going to use or need. Okay, you don't just randomly look for collocations and idioms. You go on a specific topic. Now everyone knows that before you go into a negotiation, you need to prepare. Okay, that's, that's rule one. Um, Especially so if you are going into a negotiation and English is not your first language. So you need to understand and prepare your position, okay? You need to think about the position of the other person, okay? And then, you know, your best case scenario, worst case scenario. And all of these, all of these parts of the process, can, you can add another part of the process and this can be to prepare your language skills. So this can be to research, find, two, three, four expressions that you want to use in the next negotiation. If you do that, then, I mean, I don't recommend that you look for 20 expressions to use. No, just grab a few and try and really be conscious that you're going to dedicate and use two or three expressions in this negotiation. And, um, and then once you've done that and you're confident using it, then you can look for some more, okay? But the most important thing to begin with is just to start with two, three, or four. And if you do that, then you'll start to slowly improve and you'll see the results, okay? And like I said, it's category-based. So if, you, if you're going into a negotiation, look for ones in negotiations. If you're going, if you need to write a, compl a complaint email, then look at um, idioms or collocations for complaining. I mean, it's very simple. Just do some research on the internet. Boom, you found one. Okay, great, use it. Boom, another one use it and once you've done that you'll be, you'll be good to go and then you'll slowly develop a bigger collocation or idiom, idiom list and you can review that every now and then. I mean it's, it's certain that the only way that we can improve our English is by actively participating in our own learning. If we just go to class once a week or we do an hour of conversation with our coach or trainer I mean, this is the minimum and it will probably maintain your level, but it's not really going to help expand and develop your English skills. And like I said, if you can incorporate your uh, language skills and put them into the process, in your normal business processes, okay, then it won't seem like you're having to make such a big effort, okay? You can just take... Uh, the, the process, put it, take the, the, the technique you need and put it into the process and then you're prepared for your next presentation, you're, pre you're prepared for your next uh, meeting or negotiation, okay? So that is collocations and idioms and that's how I recommend that you go about trying to improve on them. Um, I hope that the information that was uh, here today was useful. I'm sure you'll find it quite, quite useful. Uh, if you want to do the quiz or take the, um, the collocations quiz or the course, then come over to theartofbusinessenglish.com. And if you would like to read the podcast, uh, sorry, the, the post that I've got, then you should also go to the Art of Business English. I'll put that in the show notes here for this podcast. And uh, if you have any questions, please, by all means, put something up on the AOBE Facebook page, I'd be more than happy to reply to your questions or comments on that. 
and otherwise have a great day and good luck and keep going forward with your business English. Thanks and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.